Good evening, everyone. So happy that we are back with our fourth workshop of our Welcome to the Pride workshop series here at Archbishop Carroll High School, all things academic with uh, Dr. Banks. We are so happy to be here today. Um, we're gonna just give it a few more minutes so that more families can log in, tune in and join us. Um, just a couple of housekeeping reminders. Um, the majority of our class is now enrolled. We're very excited about that. Um, if you haven't done so yet, please make sure you set up your school email. We don't want you missing out on all of the amazing things that we have coming up here at Archbishop Carroll High School. So make sure you check out your school, uh, you set up your school email. A tutorial video has been sent out to your parents. Parents, if you're watching, a tutorial video was in one of the last newsletters that we sent out. Make sure that you do that. Um, also, one other, a couple other housekeeping notes. Um, we, uh, the deadline to select your courses for next year for freshmen um, will be next Friday. So if your student has not already done that, if you haven't had a chance to sit down with your student and do that, uh, please make sure you do that. Um, the form has been sent to your student's email. It has also been sent to you in our enrolled student newsletter. So make sure that you check that out as well. Um, Lions Academy. Lions Academy is coming up this summer. So excited. Great way to get everything you need to know about Carol. Um, there are two sessions. Um, they run from, let me pull up the calendar. It is June 20th through July 1st, and then July 11th through the 22nd. Not everybody can go to every uh, lines to each uh, lines academy. So once a slot, once a session is full, we'll close that, and then you have to go to the other one. So make sure that if you have a strong preference for which lines academy you attend, you submit the form ASAP. It has been sent to you um, via the enrolled student newsletter. I'll also make sure that I drop those links in the chat. Once again, you must have a Carol student email to sign up. So make sure that you do that first. You need to set up your school email. Um, lastly, if there are any students who are interested in soccer, boys or girls soccer, we, the admissions department is teaming up with our academic, with our athletics department to host a special soccer clinic here at Archbishop Carroll on June 4th. We'll be sending out a flyer for that and a link to register for the event. First 40 kids who register get a free Carol t-shirt. So, and lunch is provided and you get an incredible workshop with our amazing soccer staff. So definitely um, if you're interested, if it's something you wanna maybe try in high school, this is a wonderful opportunity to, you know, get your feet wet, uh, try it out. It's a lot of fun. I personally love soccer. I'm a big fan. So I, I really am pushing that. <laughs> but, um, but we'll give it another minute or so um, to get uh, more families tuned in. And of course, if you are watching this video later, um, all of this information um, will be posted on our YouTube page and all of Dr. Banks' contact information will be listed on the slideshow as well. So just make sure you stick around till the end of the presentation so that you can jot that down. Um, Again, this is, you guys are all enrolled students now. This is so wonderful, very excited, um, which means that admissions is passing the baton over to our wonderful administrative staff here at Archbishop Carroll High School. So if you have any specific questions, now you can reach out directly to those departments to get any and all answers that you need. Um, the time is now 6.06. .06. Um, so I think we, we have a couple people watching. So I think we're going to go ahead and get started. I know more people will trickle in. Um, so once again, my name is Ms. Tendezo. I'm the Director of Admissions. Some of you may know me from your interviews, um, and some of you may know me just from my role in the videos that you've seen. Um, but once again, congratulations, congratulations. Welcome to the Pride. We're so excited to have you guys here with us. And it brings me great pleasure to introduce Dr. Banks. Um, she will be talking about all things academics. I don't want to step on her toes and do any intro, so I'm going to let her take over from here. So welcome, Dr. Banks. 
Thank you so much, Ms. Condezo, and uh, good evening and welcome to Archbishop Carroll High School. It is just wonderful that we have you coming to our school and, and um, as an educator, I've been an educator for over 30 years to watch ninth graders come in and to partner with you uh, through this high school experience uh, to get to the end of 12th grade and to just see their academic growth is just going to be, I just get so excited when, uh, when I think about uh, the incoming class. So again, welcome. So what I would like for us to do is I have put together a presentation that I'm going to share with you now. I just wanna make sure if everyone can see this. Okay. Everyone can see it, correct? All right. Yes, Dr. Banks. All right, thank you so much. All right, so just a little bit about our academic life here. And I'll tell you a little bit about what my role here as a director of curriculum instruction. Uh, I oversee everything in academics. Uh, I am. Uh, I oversee the teachers, curriculum, um, uh, instructions, um, observations. Uh, I uh, connect with the students. I view grades. Um, I connect with the parents. So anything that you can think of academics, uh, I oversee uh, that, uh, that area. So if uh, in your experience, I always say, um, if you have any questions, any concerns, uh, you can always go to your teacher, but uh, you can always come to me. I will, more, I will have the answer. So um, the academic life here at Archbishop Carroll, as we have been saying um, throughout, that it is a co-educational college preparatory school, um, and we are accredited uh, by the advanced uh, uh, and uh, ED and is approved by the District of Columbia. Um, so under that, those uh, accreditations and over the Archdiocese of Washington, uh, we are mandated uh, to satisfy uh, requirements for a diploma from Archbishop Carroll. And um, first of all, you must complete the required number of credits. Uh, and we will go over that in a few minutes. And two, you must complete the required Christian service hours. This is so important. In order for you to graduate, you must complete service hours uh, here. Um, and I would strongly uh, encourage you to start in ninth grade. Um, it is, uh, we should be doing service all the way through, but I would hate for you not to do any service hours and then get to your 12th grade year and you have to then cram it all in. So um, you, uh, you would have the uh, required credit hours, Christian service, and you must pass all courses taken during the senior year. And lastly, you must cooperate with all school policies, rules, and regulations. And we're gonna break down these four things um, in, the, in the next 40, 45 minutes. Uh, so the next thing is that our school is a college preparatory uh, school. And what we have implemented uh, last year, we went from an IB program to an AP program, which is through the college board. So, Ninth and 10th grade, uh, all students are in a pre-AP curriculum. That is the framework of College Board. So I'm very proud of that. The students have done uh, very well in the pre-AP uh, program. And so all students in ninth grade, if you're entering all ninth graders, uh, you will be taking Catholicism, that is a requirement. All students will take that English nine. Uh, algebra one or geometry, it just depends on what level of math you are in uh, in your eighth grade year and that will be decided by uh, counseling. Everyone will take biology, world history nine. You have a choice of Spanish or French. 
all students would take college seminar nine and PE and an elective. So uh, we have a robust uh, uh, courses for ninth grade, um, but most of the courses are man, you know, it's required. You have a little bit of wiggle room with taking an elective. I will quickly go through 10th grade. Again, it's pre-AP. Um, it follows the same uh, course as ninth grade, but um, you take uh, Christ, uh, which is um, basically religion 10. You'll take English. Math will be different. You either take geometry or algebra two, chemistry, health, Western civilization, which is a history course, Sp Spanish or French, and of course, electives. In 11th grade, this is where it changes. Um, ninth and 10th grade is pre-AP. And when we enter into 11th grade, you have, you're able to take AP courses. And when I say you're able to, it's not that you uh, will take them because what we do is we monitor all students, ninth and 10th grade and watch their academic progress. And depending on grades um, and what and the recommendation of the teachers, uh, it will be decided whether they are ready for the uh, AP curriculum. If they are not ready for the AP curriculum, we still offer a very rigorous program to all students. So either option, uh, you will be getting a well-rounded uh, curriculum, a rigorous curriculum, but in uh, 11th grade, that's when the AP courses begin. Now, AP uh, exams or AP uh, uh, courses uh, are, if you are eligible and it's a very fast moving curriculum and it's more so on a college level. And at the end of the course, uh, students will take an AP exam and depending on the score, you can get a score between one and five. Uh, you will be eligible, uh, depending on the school, because each school is different with scores. Um, you can opt out of uh, an English class or history class that you've taken. So it is um, it's a wonderful program um, and I'm, we're very excited to be able to offer it. So in 11th grade, we have social justice, English 11, algebra two, pre-calculus, physics, US history, electives, and in addition to AP um, courses, we do offer dual enrollment at different colleges within the area. And uh, it, again, it depends on your uh, grade point average. So again, just going back to, we do offer a rigorous program here at Archbishop Carroll. And the same with 12th grade. Um, Vocations, world, uh, religion, English 12, financial literacy, calculus, environmental science, um, anatomy, government, and of course, electives and dual enrollment. One thing that I really would like to talk to uh, everyone is academic integrity. Many students coming into high school sometimes um, don't understand what that means. And um, I really wanna talk about that. Each member of the Archbishop Carroll community is called by our school's mission to think critically, creatively and morally to serve God with purpose. So critically thinking, morality and service to God requires honesty and integrity. So, what I have found that um, sometimes students uh, don't understand that copying from another paper is, is not um, academic integrity um, or getting someone, someone's work, that's not academic integrity. And so what we are charged to do is to really uh, walk beside students for them to understand the standards of Archbishop Carroll. And um, if they fall um, into uh, an academic dishonesty, that we are right there to um, guide them uh, and to show them uh, the error and to put an action plan in place to help them um, have academic success. 
Again, our academic policy, uh, Again, we want students to take responsibility for their learning and complete the work successfully. Um, that is why we um, have the, uh, the policy in place uh, because we want to prepare them for college. And in and, and, and doing that, um, it requires them to work individually and to be creative and to put the time in uh, to complete the assignments uh, that are required. Um, we want them to be able to clearly identify where the line is between what is and is not permitted and avoid crossing it in the future. Again, we're walking beside each student. Um, everyone makes mistakes. We learn from our mistakes and as the, um, head of academics, I want um, students to, uh, if, they, if they make a mistake, for them to understand uh, their, their error and again, uh, move on and learn from it. And lastly, which I'm a firm believer in, is we build trust with the teacher and the academic community. Um, we want them to um, feel that our school is a safe place if they made a mistake, that um, we care for them, we will um, love them with open arms and we want to rebuild that trust between the teacher and the student. So that is my goal. Our grading policy. Our grading policy may look a little different to you and I want to explain why. Um, in the past, most schools, they have tests and quizzes um, being um, the bulk of um, the, uh, of, the, of the average, of, of the overall average. However, I have found that um, many students don't test well. Um, or they're nervous or they just don't test well. And it really sometimes is not an indicator of whether they know the information or not. So what I have done is that I have basically turned um, this, pyramid uh, upside down. And so I have classwork is 35%. And the reason why I, I chose to do that is if you're in school and you come to school every day and you are with your teacher and you are um, getting that classwork and you're able to interact with your um, instructor, um, gives you a better chance of the, of the uh, teacher assessing what you know. And so that is 35% of, of your grade. Homework is 15%, quizzes are 15%. Um, Project-based assessments are also 15%. Um, and tests or papers are 20%. So this is giving students a chance who have different learning styles, um, that they will be able to be successful. We have quarter grades, uh, and then we also have semester grades. So uh, we have a quarter one, we have a quarter two, but then at the end of quarter two, we have an exam um, and what we do is we take 40% of the first quarter, 40% of the second quarter, whatever grade that was, and 20% of the exam. And what we do is we calculate that and you will get a semester grade. We will then do the same thing for third quarter, you'll get a grade, fourth quarter you'll get a grade, and then we'll have an exam too. And we will calculate uh, the third and fourth uh, quarter, which is 40, 40, and then the semester, which is 20. And then we will then take semester one and semester two, we will average them both, and then that will be your overall grade. So it may seem complicated, but when you go through the process, it's not. So if you have any questions, uh, you can always um, ask those at the end or contact me and I can walk through it step by step. Now, what I also want to um, 
talk about is teachers will update families on a student's progress regularly. Um, these are updates, not grade reports, and a student's grade may change from time, from a time, a progress report, or my backpack update, uh, or my, up, my backpack update appears, which means, as Ms. Condenso stated, right now, you are all getting your emails. Sometime in the summer, uh, you will get a My Backpack account. And this is key because this is basically holding uh, all the grades. You can view this daily, weekly, hourly. <laughs> it's it's 24 hour access. And this really uh, keeps uh, the teacher, I'm not the teacher, the student uh, informed daily of their progress and the parent can view the grades. Um, constantly to ensure that they are on track. This is all through my backpack. My backpack is very important. So again, my backpack allows students and parents to access grades, homework, attendance, information, their schedules through the internet. And again, as I stated before, teachers will update my backpack and it is the primary and most powerful tool for communication between teachers and parents. It's very important that you look at your child's My Backpack. If you wanna look at it daily, that's fine. But I really will suggest that you look at it weekly so that you uh, are updated on your child's progress. Um, what I have found is that some parents, if they don't look at it, they're very surprised when they when we have mid-quarter reports and they're not aware. And so when I speak to them, they hadn't checked their my backpack. So it is a primary tool. Um, we must all remember that our goals involve students becoming independent learners and responsible young adults. Um, this is a transition, especially going into ninth grade, that in ninth grade, we are there for our students, but it's, it's a jump from middle school to high school. Um, teachers are there for students, but more independence is required. Are we here to give them those tools? Yes, we are, and we will do that. Um, but just know that the expectation is for students to become independent learners and responsible young adults. So in doing that, we um, encourage uh, the students to constantly view my backpack and parents, uh, if you can partner with us, uh, that would uh, be um, greatly appreciated. Um, if you have any questions regarding my backpack, uh, you can always contact the registrar and her email address is on this slide. Grading scale. So we have a basic or standard uh, grading scale, uh, a, a 90 or a 97 to 100 is an A plus, a 90 to a 96 is an A. Same thing, B plus 87 to 89 is a B plus, a B is 80 to 86, so on and so forth. Um, a D is 60 to 69. If you get below a 60, that is an F. So um, our goal is that no student has an F. My goal is that no students have a D. And I know in some, homes, some households, the goal is that no student has a C. So um, we ask that you look at this and plan um, accordingly. We do have academic honors that we bestow on our students quarterly. We have um, an uh, award ceremony, an honors award ceremony, and we uh, acknowledge uh, students that fit in the, these three categories. Honor roll is a 3.0 to a 3.49 with no grade lower than a C. A distinguished honor is 3.5 to 3.99 with no grade lower than a B. And principal's list is a 4.0 and above with no grade lower than a B. So I am proud to, to say that we have 
uh, especially third quarter, um, especially our 10th graders. We had uh, many students uh, over half the school that were, that were in these three categories and they worked very hard. So that is quarterly that we have um, this academic honors. For students who do not uh, uh, reach the mark of academic honors, uh, we uh, work with those students uh, through tutoring, after school tutoring, um, checking in with parents, partnering, partnering with the parents, and um, conducting parent-teacher conferences, either individually or grade level. Again, we are here to support students and families in any way that we can. Um, so as soon as we see that a student's GPA is below a 2.3, we jump into action. Um, we may even jump into action if uh, that student is at a 2.5, 2.6, and we feel as though uh, they can do better. Uh, we will provide academic support. So overall, our goal is just to support all students to ensure that they are academically successful. Um, Want to talk about failures. Um, students are required to attend Archbishop Carroll's um, summer recovery program. We do have that. Um, unfortunately, uh, if we do have students that fail, um, as I said previously, uh, you must pass all your courses in order to continue here at Archbishop Carroll. So what we have in place is that we have a summer recovery program. Um, if, you, if your final grade is an F, Students who do not make up credits in summer school may not be allowed to return to Arch, uh, Archbishop Carroll High School in the fall. Any student who fails the equivalent of four credits, four classes or more in an academic year will not be permitted to return to Archbishop Carroll High School the following year. Um, I say that I don't want any student to leave us, but again, we are a rigorous, we have a rigorous uh, curriculum. We are a college preparatory school and we have uh, a standard that we're going to hold. And um, any student who uh, falls within this category um, may run the risk of not returning in the fall. And in bold, it says if you fail four credits, you will not be asked back for the following year. So as I said before, our academic curriculum is through College Board. It's a pre-AP framework with supporting curriculum. Um, it's we, uh, what I like about College Board uh, framework. They have cross-curricular learning. Um, so, for example, I was in art class and the social studies teacher was talking about uh, Van Gogh. And just so happened, I a few days later, I went into the art class and she was doing some painting that involved Van Gogh and she was able to um, integrate that history lesson into the art lesson. So that's one of the things that I love about our school that we uh, have cross-curricular learning. Uh, we also um, we also are a one-to-one -one, uh, device school, especially since the pandemic. We, I think everyone had to be, um, but we're continuing that trajectory, and uh, we we have begun to implement different interactive programs: IXL, Pear Deck, Nearpod. Um, resources for students to be actively engaged in learning. Um, that is very important um, to be a college preparatory school, but then to also realize that they are ninth graders or 10th graders, you gotta make learning fun and learning is fun. So we're constantly thinking of resources to help um, engage our students. Now I'm just gonna talk a little bit about ninth grade and um, the courses uh, that we have uh, a little bit in depth. So we have English 9 
and um, the primary focus is on reading, writing, and language skills. Um, skills that have immediate relevance for students and that will be essential for their future coursework. It's essential um, that students understand how to critically think, how to uh, analyze uh, a literature, uh, to be able to, um, as they write, to have supporting evidence to back up their statement. And these are all the things that they learn in ninth grade. So this course in ninth grade has three main focus, focuses. We want to read closely, value evidence, and notice language choices. So these were some of the books that they read this year, Animal Farm, The Pearl, No Fear. Uh, they read The Great Gatsby. They were really into The Great Gatsby. Um, so uh, a lot of essay writing, a lot of um, warm ups or do nouns are writing prompts. So uh, they hit the ground running in English 9. We also have our religion class, Catholicism. And what I love about this class is that it explains the Catholic beliefs, practices, and teachings, along with how these connect to everyday life. Um, all of the religion classes takes what the belief, uh, our belief, and then really integrates it in, into real life situations. And that helps students to uh, engage in this course. And it helps them to grow together and explore faith and build community. And it also respects respectfully uh, participated and appreciate Catholic cultural traditions. Um, so um, the, uh, Mr. Managing presently teaches uh, Catholic, uh, Catholicism and um, they're actually running to his class daily. So I love it. And he definitely connects everyday life to whatever he's teaching. Algebra one. Um, Again, uh, you can, uh, a student may come in algebra one or geometry. Again, it really depends on um, what your child is taking this year and counseling will make that determination. So these are the, um, the things that they will be learning that year. Uh, Miss, uh, Ross, who is a phenomenal teacher, uh, she is. She loves uh, IXL, Pear Deck, Nearpod. She she does so many interactive things with the class. So again, that's another class that they run to every day. So she likes to um, energize and hydrate, create student groups. She loves Google Classroom apps, and she encourages students to ask questions. Um, she stays after school and she works with students. Um, she communicates with parents um, daily, weekly. So, um, but it is a rigorous class, but she is there to help them in any way that she can. Biology. Our science department is awesome. They love hands-on um, activities, labs. Um, they have a standard-based NCSS, which is the next generation science standards. And every time I walk into classes, they are, especially biology class, they are completing labs and experiments and investigations almost daily. And so uh, very um, excited about uh, what the science department is doing. This is Mr. Balistrieri. He is one of the science teachers here. Um, and they love preparing students for college level uh, biology. So again, uh, very interactive uh, and really taking um, life experiences and integrating them into the content. And uh, students love going uh, to class, especially Mr. Balistrieri's class. World history, world history. Um, it's a lot of writing in world history. Again, history and science kind of work together just like science and math. And uh, 
you do a lot of writing in, in history as well as English. And the main goal is to articulate concepts relating to the material and develop arguments based on the evidence. That's the same thing that I stated in English, found in primary and secondary sources. They want you to explain the historical and geographical background of contemporary issues, which is explaining what's happened in history to real life. So identifying similarities and differences between historical and geographical developments. So all of that is discussion. In history, there's a lot of discussion. There's a lot of writing, which goes back to um, English. So it is cross-curricular. Again, as I stated, that we, you have an option of taking the French track or the Spanish track. Um, you have to have two years, at least two years of both. So if you take French one, you have to take French two. If you take Spanish one, you have to take Spanish two. If you take French one, and you didn't particularly like it, then you say, I'm gonna take Spanish one, you still have to take Spanish two because you have to have two years in the same discipline. So French one and Spanish one focuses on the basic level of interpersonal speaking and listening, reading, writing. We learn about culture, uh, which can also be connected to history as well. Um, you'll learn greetings, school life, everyday life, family and friends, occupations, places around town. And, and so it's, it's very interactive. When I've gone in the world language classes, sometimes they're at the board um, working, sometimes they're up dancing, sometimes, you know, they're wearing costumes. So it is very interactive, um, as well as really learning how to speak uh, the language. We also have a um, college seminar. Um, and I love this class because uh, Ms. Williams, I'm sorry, Wilson takes uh, each college uh, freshman class and she really shows them the trajectory of where you are as a freshman and the things that you need to be putting in place to get you ready for uh, 12th grade. Uh, she she um, talks about study skills. They're putting together a portfolio. They're talking, started, they will begin talking about colleges and you know how much do they think college will cost when they graduate? And where would they want to go? And what's the difference between a state school and a private school as far as financially? Um, so she really begins to get them thinking about what they want to do. And then after they express to her what they want to do, then she tries to navigate a roadmap of how to get there. So these are some of the things that she does. Um, she, what I like that she wants, she creates a, caps, uh, a capstone project. It's a freshman portfolio, which I told you about, that includes samples of the skills and information learned during the year in this and other classes. So again, she's, um, it's cross-curricular. She's, uh, she's um, implementing um, everything that they've learned so that if they do it in their freshman year, we want to continue that and have a sophomore college seminar, a junior college seminar, and a senior college seminar. So by the time they are finished here at Archbishop Carroll, they have a robust part, portfolio. We also have performing arts, and that is part of the electives. And um, some of the things that we do have, we have our music department. Um, right now we have uh, drums, we have winds, um, we have um, not brass, we, we have we have winds, we have drum, and we have a choir, we have film studies, we have theater, uh, we have art and uh, multimedia, we have digital um, media, we have photography, we have yearbook. So we have a, a well-rounded 
arts department, uh, teachers who are very passionate about uh, their craft and want to share their knowledge with students. Uh, we do have two specialized uh, programs here at Archbishop Carroll. One is the Jim Vance Media Program under the direction of Dr. Ward. And um, we were uh, pleased that this year that we celebrated, um, we had a gala for our seniors because uh, this is our first graduating class from the Jim Vance Media uh, Program. And so we were just very proud to celebrate those seniors. Um, it is a uh, rigorous program um, under her direction. And um, once students get the fundamentals of uh, media, she begins to then um, give them uh, projects or, or, or employment throughout the school building and sometimes outsources them to uh, companies or organizations uh, that need assistance. Um, so uh, she really exposes them to um, the world of media. And we also have the other specialized program that we have is our um, engineering program under uh, Ms. Ming, uh, who absolutely loves what she does. Um, she, uh, again, is a very rigorous program uh, that requires um, a lot of hard work and dedication. Um, so um, that is what um, the specialized programs are here at Archbishop Carroll. So um, that is the end of my presentation. And if you have any questions or concerns, you can always uh, reach out to me. Um, I'm I'm always available. Um, please give me at least 24 to 48 hours. Most of the times I can get back to you sooner than that, but um, definitely within 20, uh, 24, 48 hours, um, you, you have my um, email address and a number where I can be reached in my extension. If you have any questions about my backpack, uh, you can always uh, contact Ms. DeCruz, who is our registrar, and her information is also um, in this slide. Thank you so much, Dr. Banks. If you wouldn't mind just keeping up that slide um, so people can, um, who are tuning in can just keep an eye out for that. Sure. Um, that would be wonderful. Um, if you have any questions for Dr. Banks regarding academics, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, she covered a lot of great information about what academic life really looks like here at Archbishop Carroll. Um, we're here to really foster your children for them to be the very best that they can be. Um, but we also have really high expectations of our students um, and we'll be there to help them meet those expectations every step of the way. Um, so once again, um, if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat now. Um, quick few more shameless plugs from the admissions department. Again, um, if you haven't set up your email, um, Dr. Banks just explained all the reasons why you should do that. So um, make sure that you set up your school email, make sure that you are doing your course selections for next year. Um, she spoke about the wonderful courses that we have to offer. So make sure that you do that. The deadline to register for course selections is next Friday. That is next Friday. Friday, May 13th is the deadline. So make sure that you sign up for that. Um, oh, thank you so much. A parent just dropped a comment that said this was an excellent presentation. Thank you. Uh, so thank you, Dr. Banks. <laughs> um, what's it called? So just make sure that you're signing up for, you're doing your course selections. And of course, sign up for Lions Academy. Lions Academy registration will close June 3rd. So please make sure that you do that. You don't want to um, be taking, be in a session of Lions Academy that doesn't work with your summer schedule. I'm sure everybody's planning ahead already, hoping to enjoy this summer. So make sure that you plan ahead and around Lions Academy. Lions Academy is mandatory for all uh, new Carroll families. Um, once again, if you have any questions about the curriculum, about what ninth grade life looks like, please drop them in the chat. Um, 
of course, Dr. Banks um, will be available to answer any questions you may have after this presentation is over as well. Um, oh, this is a really good one. Um, Dr. Banks. Yes. How do former students who are now attending college weigh their academic preparation from Archbishop Carroll? Um, I have an answer based on my experience, but you can go <laughs> ahead and answer that as well. <laughs> Well, one thing that I love about um, our school, our community, is that our, stu our students, our, our students come back um, and visit us, and they tell us how much um, the curriculum uh, that we have um, presented and they've gone through has helped them as they went to college. Um, many of our students, um, we had a uh, decision, college decision day on Monday and our students, our seniors got into over 160 uh, schools and were offered uh, over $5 million of scholarships. And so when they get to that point, and they see that their hard work has paid off. Uh, they are just amazed. It's like, wow, you know, I, I kind of went kicking and screaming, but I see the benefit. And then when they go to college and they realize that they are prepared, they come back and let us know um, how much they appreciate um, the hard work that we poured into them. Yes. And, you know, I reiterate everything that Dr. Banks just said. I think that that's the true testament that we have a lot of young alumni come back and state that, state that, you know, oh, I was really prepared. You know, I'm looking at my peers and they don't know how to do some of these skills that my teachers drilled into me my junior and senior year. So it really is a testament to where our preparation is geared towards college prep. Um, uh, someone asked a question about when the college, when the Lions Academy dates will be. I just dropped them in the chat, but in case you can't see them, once again, there's two Lions Academy sessions. One is June 20th through July 1st, and the second one is July 11th through July 22nd. Um, attendance is mandatory, but not for both. You'll choose one and it's a full two week session. Students must be in uniform, very important. We sent out the link to Flynn O'Hara so you can guys can go ahead and start ordering your uniforms. Um, I am not there yet with my child, but uh, I'm sure this is a time when kids are doing a lot of growing. So I suggest maybe ordering a size up so that your uniforms will last at least through freshman year. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, uh, uniforms will be mandatory during Lions Academy. Lions Academy is mandatory, very important. Um, will these slides be made available? This video will actually be saved and posted on our school YouTube page. So you're welcome to watch it as many times as you need so that you can get the information that you want. Um, so, and of course, again, Dr. Banks is available for any specific questions you might have about your student. But if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat because you may think they're specific, but maybe it applies to another parent watching the stream right now. Um, so, you know, keep the questions coming. I hope we are um, answering everything um, that you guys need regarding academic life. Um, and of course, our Lions Academy, our uh, events and deadlines coming up for our enrolled students. Uh, course selection, again, is due next Friday, Friday the 13th. Um, I will uh, drop the link for the uniforms in the chat. Um, it was in the enrolled student newsletter. If you are not receiving the enrolled student newsletter, please contact our admissions department. We wanna make sure that you're getting it. We pulled the contact information from TADS. So if there's another email address that you'd like to use, we can add it to your TADS account. Um, yeah. Oh, here's a good one. Do students need to take AP courses in order to be prepared for college? What does the average junior schedule, in parentheses, rigor look like for students who are accepted to college? Well, no, they, you do not have to have AP courses in order to be accepted into a college. However, uh, we strongly encourage students 
uh, to take AP courses. Uh, as you know, uh, college um, acceptance is very rigorous, it's, it's competitive. And um, I have worked at the college level um, as well. And it could be, it really could come down to uh, two students or a, a series of students that have the same GPA that might have the same um, SAT scores and trying to find just that nudge, what's, what's gonna make one stand out from the rest? And it could be the AP courses because even if and some students or some parents ask, well, what if my child didn't do well um, or, didn't do well on their AP score. I still say the experience because they had a college rigorous um, uh, 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 year of, yeah, through this course. And so they got the uh, experience um, of college level work and expectation that many students did not. Um, we have at least our freshman class, at least a quarter, and it's really not freshman. Our junior class, uh, we have at least a quarter, almost moving into half of our students that are taking AP uh, courses. Uh, we are, this is the um, year of AP or, or the, the month of AP exams um, nationally. So we are in the um, throws of, of AP uh, exams. And, and I'm very um, excited to see uh, how well they do. Um, so uh, I hope I answered your question. If I didn't, please let me know. Yes, that, um, that was from one, uh, uh, what's it called? Layla Smith's mother. Hello, Ms. Smith. Thank you for your insightful questions. Um, please keep dropping in the questions, anything to do with curriculum. Um, you know, we really uh, love this. We love parents who um, ask the questions specifically. Um, you can ask specific questions about differences in the courses, anything like that. Um, because again, we want parents to make the most important decision as they're doing their course selections. Very important. Once again, course selections are due next Friday. Um, so we really want to emphasize that all freshmen uh, complete their course selections because you know we don't want any surprises when they come to Lions Academy and they're like, oh, well, I didn't get to pick a class. I was like, well, honey, we sent out the link. So we want to make sure that everybody's picking their courses and the link will be closed next Friday. So you have until then to take a look at the classes that are offered, sit down with your students, um, have a talk about what their long term goals are. Um, one of the really great things about the Lions Academy sign up is they ask one of the questions is, what do you hope to accomplish in high school? Imagine it's graduation day and you're looking back, what do you hope to have accomplished? And a lot of what we're seeing is um, to maintain my academic success that I've been achieving so far. And that is really great to see students really seeing into their future and seeing what they want to accomplish with all the tools and opportunities that Carol has to offer. Um, so that's really great. Um, any more questions? Oh, we got a like on the video. Yes. <laughs> so that's great. Uh, I'm so glad people are tuning in. I hope we've answered the questions that are so far on the chat. We'll stay on for another minute to see if anybody, the light, the viewership is fluctuating. So I think some parents are logging in and just catching the tail end of it. Um, again, if you didn't know, this video will be saved and posted on our YouTube page and will be shared um, via email via the enrollment student news, enrolled student newsletter. Um, so make sure you're checking out our YouTube page. Um, make sure that you're reading through the entire enrolled student newsletter. I know it's long, but it's long because there's a lot of information. It's the time to really become informed about everything that is Carol. And more than likely, any questions you might have are probably answered in our videos series. So definitely check that out. Um, we'll give it another minute, one last time. Course selections are due next Friday. Lions Academy sign up will close on June 3rd. Um, we have our soccer event 
uh, on June 4th. Uh, what else? What else? Let's see. Uniforms are required for Lions Academy. The uniform link is now in the chat. So feel free to check that out. Order your uniforms early. Um, take a picture with them. You guys are Carol Lions now. You got to be proud of that. Really excited. Get comfortable in that. Um, Dr. Banks, is there anything else that you'd like to add for our incoming students? No, just that I'm just looking forward to, to meeting each and every one of you all. I met some of you all at the um, event a, a few weeks ago, and I just look forward to starting this journey, this academic journey, and just seeing how, how much they grow. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Banks, for um, staying late with me here to do this workshop. Um, I hope it was really informative. Um, I had a parent drop in the chat says, what do we need to do to receive the newsletters? Email admissions, email admissions at achscc.org. I dropped the email in the chat as well. Um, but I hope this has been really informative for our families. Thank you for everybody who has tuned in live. Thank you for everybody who's going to watch this video afterwards to be in informed Carol families um, for everything that's coming in the summer and the fall. Um, Dr. Banks, once again, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you for sharing your wealth of knowledge um, with our new uh, Carol families. And once again, congratulations to our all our newly enrolled students. Welcome to the Pride. Um, and I hope you all have a